All right. Hi, everybody. It's the first team call, first Team Easy call of uh, 2023. And we're really excited to share with you some strategies and tools. Hold on before you do that, before you say what it is. Well, I'm going to, don't, thanks. Well, no. I'm, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I know how to tee up. I know you did. Okay. Some strategies and tools that are going to help to support you in your business and in your life and with all your relationships and with your friendships and even the days where you're not interacting with people much, but you might feel a little bit funky. Um, some ways to maintain a certain level of consistency in how you feel and feeling good as much of the time as humanly possible. So just curious to know, um, drop a one in the chat box. If you're somebody who you sometimes feel like you're drained, you don't know why you've gotten plenty of sleep, but you just feel kind of drained. You just feel kind of low energy. Okay. A lot of you and drop a two in the chat box. If you feel like sometimes when you're around people and maybe there's like a little bit of negativity or a heaviness, like sometimes you feel like you kind of take that on and you don't feel as good as you felt going into a conversation or going into seeing family or friends or even into the supermarket or even on a, a three-way call. Okay. Lots of twos. What are some of the prompts that you have? Well, the, what I was going to say is if you if you didn't put one or two in the chat box, drop a three in the chat box if you never feel those way because you drink way too many e-shots and you were addicted to uh, just, just false sets of energy, right? Just just burying it with fake, with a false sense right, of energy. Right, but then when you stop <laughs> drinking your e-shots, you right. crash. <laughs> um, no, but those are all the great prompts. And, and then as we go into this, or nootropic, right? As we go into this, um, one of the things I'm going to invite all of you to do is to stay really open the entire time to what we're going to teach you um, and stay really disconnected from what you think you know. Stay disconnected from what you think you know. So if you're willing to stay open to learning something new that we believe can massively help you in the areas that Eden just started to kind of lay out, just type the word open in the chat box. Just type open in the chat box. Because what we're going to share with you is not conventional. It's not conventional. And it's not something that you are going to learn in a business book necessarily. It's not something you're going to learn in a strategy book necessarily, but it's something that Although science is catching up, science is catching up, but it's something that underlies everything that the world works on. And what I know for sure is after working with thousands of people, this is one of the areas that I almost always start with. And more often than not, it's one of the areas where people kind of roll their eyes and they go, this stuff isn't going to really help me. Does this really work? And then they always come back around and say, okay, teach me that stuff. So stay open, suspend your disbelief, disconnect, disconnect from what you think you know, keep an open mind. And, uh, and we hope that these tools um, can help you as they have helped us. And just like any tool, um, it's only a tool if you put it to use, right? Uh, a hammer is just a piece of wood with metal at the end until you swing it into something. Okay. How many of you have ever heard, drop a three in the chat box. How many of you ever heard the saying that energy is everything? Energy is everything. Our entire universe and all of its contents is made up of energy. And energy transfers. Energy transfers and energy doesn't die. And so what happens for those of us who, and those of you who put the ones and twos in the chat box about how sometimes you feel drained after conversations or drained, and you don't even know why you're in a great mood and you got on the phone with this person and all of a sudden you need a nap. Well, <laughs> that type of experience was happening to me for a very, very, very long time before I started to realize that as a sensitive person, as you those of you who put the ones in the two in the chat box likely are too, is that I was actually absorbing the energy from other people because I wasn't taking the action steps to protect my own energy and to move out any unwanted energy. Drop a four in the chat box if this is like a very new concept and a five if you're already sort of like in the know about this kind of a thing. Okay, so the idea that we can absorb energy from other people, other things, the stuff that we see in the media, for sure, 
even walking down the street, people passing by, some of our bodies are wired in a way where we absorb that energy and that energy can end up causing us to be tired, frustrated, anxious, depressed. Um, it can even manifest into physical ailments. Okay. When we're not aware of the energy that we're carrying and the energy that we're allowing in. So there's a few facets to this conversation. And really by the end of it, our hope is that you feel that you have a greater sense of tools that you can put into practice. We're going to give you a bunch of tools. So just pick like one or two that you want to start focusing on right away. That will give you a greater sense of agency when it comes to notice, I didn't say control greater sense of agency when it comes to being able to shield our energetic bodies while being out in the world and being social people and being building, being able to build a business with people and, and being able to protect that space, drop a, drop a six in the chat box. If that's something that you would find really valuable. And drop a seven in the chat box if you think this is just crazy talk. We won't make fun of you. These crazy American hippies. <laughs> These crazy hippies. Okay, no sevens. I think we're all on the same page here. Cool. All right. So something that I really like to do that I've gotten in the practice of, and Zach, you can share kind of what you do around this, is it starts with setting an intention for the day. Okay. It starts with waking up and setting an intention and not only to set an intention for what I want to attract into my business today. And that's something, of course, that we've been training for years, but to set an intention or make an invocation. Okay. So to invoke the, the guidance and the protection of whatever, you know, if you have spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, whatever you believe in asking for guidance, asking for that energetic protection, asking to be, to have your energy be shielded. It's simple. It takes a minute. It's really nice. We can get into, you know, specific invocations, which we won't do on this call, but this can really be something where, you know, if you have any angels that you feel connected to, or, you know, whatever your religion or your spiritual beliefs dictate the ones that you lean on for spiritual guidance, that's who you would call in and ask to just support you and to protect your energy throughout the day. And this creates an energetic field. This creates a bit of a bubble. Okay. So that's just a great way to start and even to end the day, to close the day, to, to, to connect in spiritually with whatever it is you believe in and to thank those entities being deities, et cetera, angels, you know, guides, teachers, whatever, um, for being with you throughout the day. So we have a lot of support that we can call on again, whether you're spiritual, whether you're, you know, participating in any particular religion, um, it, we're all kind of talking about the same thing when we talk about having access to spiritual protection. Um, and if you are an atheist, then think about this as the quantum field and the energy that is discussed inside of quantum physics, and you can just connect in with the energy of the field and set an intention without speaking to anybody directly, but it's just as effective because we're asking for what we want. Before I move on, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Yeah. So mine starts even before that. So mine starts the moment that I open my eyes. So the moment I open my eyes, I have two choices and I've done what I'm about to share tons of times in my life. And I focus on what I'm about to teach more often than not. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and our eyes open and we go, uh, right? Drop a one in the chat box if you're guilty, right? Your alarm goes off or you hear your baby crying or you just wake up, uh, another day. Uh, look how cold outside it is. Uh, I have to go to my job. Uh, I didn't sleep well, right? And we wake up with this miserable negative energy. Or you could just open your eyes and utter something very simple, which I love to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm alive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that little bit of starting my day in gratitude even if I have to force it, even if I really want to give a 
uh, I force myself to say thank you. And what science will show is that when you express gratitude, either in internally or verbally, you automatically start to raise your energetic frequency automatically. Automatically, the cells start to wake up, your neurotransmitters start to wake up, your brain starts to wake up, and it starts to look for positive things in your life right away. That's how our brains are designed. So thank you, thank you, thank you, just for the mere fact that I'm alive. Just for the mere fact that I'm alive. So that's one of the ways I start. And then the next thing I do after doing what Eden just shared is I open my journal. And I don't necessarily go to write gratitude right away. What I go to write right away is whatever's on my mind. So I might write something along the lines of, God, I didn't really sleep well last night. Oh, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich sounds, sounds delicious. That sushi probably wasn't a great idea for dinner last night. I wonder what I'm going to do today. And I literally just let my mind dump out on paper whatever it is thinking. And I don't judge it and I don't criticize it. And I'm not looking for spelling and I'm not looking for grammar and I'm not sitting there writing poetry. I'm literally just emptying my mind of any kind of thoughts so that I can start to create an open awareness of what could be from an energy perspective. So I'm literally just doing stream of consciousness writing and then I'll move on to some other practices. So that's how I start my day. Okay. So these are really like intentional going about our day, the way that Zach does it, the way that I suggest a combination, whatever speaks to you, our encouragement would be to take on some kind of a morning practice to bring that awareness into your day. That's huge. And then next, what we're going to share is a couple of things that you can do preemptively. So knowing that you're going into work with coworkers, knowing that you're going to be, you know, at the local coffee shop or the supermarket or your kid's school or around people in some way, or you're walking, you know, you're going to walk into a room where the news is going to be on, or you don't even know, you know, what people are going to talk about, or maybe even you're going on social media and you are really sensitive to the messages that are being shared by people in your network. So a couple of things that you can do proactively and preemptively, knowing that you might be going into a challenging environment or like me, I'm so sensitive. I do this anytime I leave the house before I get into an Uber, before I'm gonna be around people at all. So there, here's, I'm gonna give you two techniques and then we'll see what, what Zach has to share. So this is again, really preemptively. So the first is, I imagine a bubble around me. I imagine a, a bubble where anything that doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love or every anything that isn't the highest level of, of energetic frequency, that it just bounces off of my bubble. Okay, so you can imagine yourself encased in a bubble. And when you go to events, even when you get on a three-way call with a prospect, you don't know anything about, like, you just never know what people are going to throw at you. You never know what people around you are experiencing when you're out in the world. So you just imagine a bubble around you. Okay. It just takes a little bit of imagination and visualization. And when people are around, you can just imagine all of the energy that doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love. It just bounces off. It doesn't even affect you. It completely bounces off. The mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Remember, so visualization becomes very, very powerful. Even there's certain healing modalities that work with visualizing colors and visualizing colors coming into the body has an actual physical effect and a benefit on the body. We're not going to get into all those things, but visualization is wildly effective. So you can imagine this bubble with this stuff just bouncing off of you. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Um, another thing, or do you have any else for preemptive? Yeah. But you want to go? Yeah, go. You can go. We'll can bounce back. Yeah. And forth. Is which part true, Craig, that the mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined? Yes. A hundred percent true. And there's amazing research that demonstrates those two things. For example, there was a, there was a study that said they took basketball, right. And they said, okay, this person's going to practice shooting free throws, right? Three hours a day or something like that. Three hours a day for the next three days, they're going to practice, you know, 50 shots a day. The next person in the room, they're just going to imagine shooting those same 50 shots. The person who imagined taking the shots outperformed the one who took the actual shots by like 90%. 
and they both were of equal athletic ability. So that's just one example. It's 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 remarkable how that happens. That's why that's why pro sports. That's why so much visualization and sports psychologists work with see them seeing themselves in situations before they even happen. Race car drivers, for example, use visualization all the time because um, the brain the brain really can't tell the difference, and it's an amazing benefit. Um, okay, so Eden's right in talking about this bubble, but ultimately, Stephen right huge with golfers, right? Ultimately, we still exist inside of this bubble. So you could create this beautiful bubble and inside of the bubble, you could still be an asshole to yourself, right? You could still feel like, uh, and you could still feel like a jerk. So you could have this bubble of not wanting any of this bad energy to come see you, but you could still be pushing out negative energy yourself. So one of the things that's really important to do is clear out again, anything that, that you, we're, we're going to get that. Well, you're asking preemptively. So, okay. yeah. So preemptively. I'd really invite all of you to look into finding some kind of a breath work practice or some sort of a meditation practice. I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, and if you don't have time, you could really do something as simple as a little bit of movement, a little bit of sound, a little bit of breath, right? So something I like to do is just shake out my body. So I'll come here in the morning. Eden's usually still asleep. I'll come in and I'll just shake out my body. I'll shake out my hips a lot. Men, that's especially important, shaking out your hips because we hold a lot of energy in our hips. And then just some deep breathing. Ah, ah, ah. And I'm, I'm cultivating energy. I'm cultivating healthy energy. And as I'm thinking about my breath, I'm thinking basically there's a fun little saying in the world of breath work and meditation, which is, Inhale the good shit, exhale the bullshit, right? So <laughs> inhale the good shit, huh, exhale the bullshit. And it's just, again, it's a great way to create a frame because it's not just about putting a bubble around ourselves. It's how are we feeling inside of the actual bubble that we're now creating? Yep. Great. And, and the bubble, like preemptively, I think we got it covered. Um, something I like to do. So I referred also to the bubble as, as a shield. And sometimes I'll literally like physically say shield on shield on. Okay. And it, it helps. So leaving the house shield on, if you feel like knocked out for any reason, or like some negativity has come in, even if you feel like it's your own still shield on, okay. Whatever doesn't operate at 100% unconditional love, whatever doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love, please allow it to release now. Okay. So a version of what Zach's talking about with meditation and, and doing breath work, if you can do all of that, you know, take five, 10 minutes in the morning, just to establish yourself throughout the day. Great. But if you feel some of that stuff creeping up throughout the day, when you're out in the world, it's possible that it's yours. It's also possible that it's not yours. So you can just ask, you can set that intention, connect in again with whatever you believe in and just say, Hey, please, whatever doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love. I would, I'm happy for it to just leave now, just to leave now. And you'll be amazed at just asking for what we want makes a huge, huge, huge difference. When I was sick, I had very little control over what was going on with my body. I did everything I could. But one thing that I did every single day was I prayed and I prayed and I prayed to the, to the angels, to the heavens. I didn't even care at that point, like putting labels. I just, I prayed and I asked for what I want. And the more I was specific about what I want, the more I started to see the changes and the more I started to receive what I want. So don't be afraid to start to notice when you shift from going in, being in that really good mood to being a little bit funky to just take a moment and say, all right, I, I can see that something's going on. Like, please just help me to release anything that doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love. Now, and, oh, sorry. I want to add to that. Yeah. Go ahead. Notice what she's not doing. She's not trying to figure out what caused it or why it's happening or anything along those lines. Cause that's a game that you're playing inside your mind. And that's a game that you're never going to figure out. And quite frankly, that's a game that's going to perpetuate the negative energy. She's simply just declaring and asking for releasing of it without attaching to why it's there in the first place. Why it's there is irrelevant. Once kind of once negative energy comes into you, the reason it got there, that's a whole other conversation in that moment doesn't matter. So this is an effective way in the moment just to start activating a new energy. So you just don't feel bad in that moment. So you can start to release whatever's there. Okay. Now we're going to shift into something. Wasn't snapping for you. So we talked about how to establish some intentions for the day to maintain your own space and your own energy. Oh. We talked about a few different practices you could do to increase your level of mindfulness and awareness. 
and possibly start to release some things on your own that you might be holding. We talked about some preemptive strategies on what to do when going out in the world, getting on calls, interacting with people, being around coworkers, and so on. And now we're going to talk about some, um, I guess I would label it like reactive, but not really, more so things that you can just do regularly. Actually, let me retitle this. This is really like just energetic hygiene. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be a little hippy dippy for some of you. Okay. We're going to give you lots of different strategies that you can do for energetic hygiene, energetic hygiene, just like when I go to the bathroom or I'm, you know, cooking, um, you know, with raw meat or whatever, I'm going to wash my hands with soap because that's good hygiene. When I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, I'm going to floss my teeth and I'm going to brush my teeth because that's good hygiene. At least once a week, I'm going to wash my hair. Some of you if are gonna, I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, maybe 10 days. <laughs> but if I'm lucky. If you're lucky. <laughs> but every day, I'm going to get in the shower. I'm going to, you know, wash the areas that need to be washed to maintain my level of hygiene. So just as we maintain our physical hygiene, we're going to give you some strategies, tips, and techniques to help to maintain your energetic hygiene. It sounded like you had something to say before we oh, went into this. Uh-huh. Okay. I can save it for the evening routine. That's fine. Okay. So energetic, uh, energetic hygiene. You can do this throughout the day, multiple times a day, morning, whenever you want. But my strong recommendation is no matter what, do one of these things at night before you go to bed. Okay. I do these all throughout the day. all throughout the day for no reason at all. It just, it feels great. And it helps to, it helps to shift me. It helps to elevate my mood. Um, So we're going to give you a bunch. Again, you don't have to do all of them. These are just tools. Find a couple that you like and you can start to implement them. And if you want to try something else, you can stack it on top and whatever. Um, So one way to maintain energetic hygiene, meaning like to cleanse off of you anything that doesn't serve you, support you, that you may have absorbed from somebody else that doesn't vibrate at 100% unconditional love. One of my favorite things to do, and you can do this when you have very little time, is you take um, a shower with salt. Okay, table salt is fine. Epsom salt is fine. And what's most important is that you set the intention. So my intention as I'm, you know, as I'm rubbing some salt in the shower on my body is to cleanse anything that doesn't support me, that doesn't vibrate at hundred percent unconditional love that I'm setting an intention. It could take 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be a whole long thing, but salt showers are wildly effective especially when you're around a lot of people, like after events, always take a salt shower because you're just interacting with so many people, but really it's a great practice. Just keep some salt in your shower and you can do this every day. I love to take Epsom salt baths at night, tons of health benefits, supports the nervous system, supports healthy sleep, muscles repair, et cetera. But it also is very effective at cleansing um, cleansing for energetic hygiene. So Epsom salt baths, other things that you may have heard of, um, or you might already be doing is you can burn sage. You can burn Palo Santo. You can burn variety of different resins, um, incenses, all of those help to clear the energy of the space. And you can help to, you can put the smoke over your body again, with intention, asking for what you want to clear any energy that may or may not or that may not be serving you. So those are my go-tos. Also, Deb called it out. Deb says that she's got to dance all the time throughout the day, moving the body with intention, asking to release whatever it is that isn't, that doesn't vibrate at hundred percent conditional love, allow your body to shake and move in a very intuitive way without attaching your mind to it. It probably won't look pretty. You can do that when you're laying down, sitting up, standing up, however you do it, but you could just let your body shake and move in ways that are totally intuitive without any judgment at all. And in that movement, the body is releasing energy. And it's not just the energy that came in that day. We all have a backlog of energy that we've absorbed throughout our entire life, throughout our entire life from our families that we've, that we've, you know, um, that we've inherited genetically, generationally, ancestrally, 
And a lot of that lives inside of our body. So every time we do the sage and Palo Santo, every time we do the, sh- the salt showers and the salt baths, every time, um, you know, every time we, we sage and use resin, every time we allow our bodies to just shake out the energy, anytime we're allowing our bodies to have that type of movement, it's moving out stagnant energy that no longer serves you. So the idea when you're consistent with this is yes, you're able to clear out what happened that day, but you're also able to get into the energetic stores of what causes us to be triggered by things, what causes us to be triggered into sadness, into anxiety, into frustration, into guilt, into all of these challenging feelings and emotions. So much of it is stored energy, stored traumatic experiences. And there's a lot of science about this. So inside of this energetic hygiene practices, we're also helping to unwind years and years and years of exposure to things when we weren't paying attention to those things. I feel complete. Okay, so just a couple of last things, and then we'll and then we'll we'll hop off. Um, one thing consistent throughout the day, from the time we wake up, including while we're sleeping, is we're always playing very high frequency music in our household all the time. We're playing high frequency music all of the time. Be mindful of what you are listening to. Be really mindful. Another thing that I love, and I was just reminded of it from one of the teachers we sat with, and we used to do this every night we went before we went to bed, was something called the Ho'opo Ono prayer. And it's a Hawaiian prayer. And it goes like this. And it's an amazing healing energy prayer. And it goes like this. It says, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. You say it three times. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Or thank you, I love you. One of those iterations, so three times. Now, the very last thing that I'll share is this. One of the greatest things that might be causing you to wake up in the morning and go, uh, is because you are sleeping with this next to your bed. Don't do it. Put this outside of your bedroom. Don't do it. Give yourself at least 30 minutes in the morning before going to your phone. Turn off your notifications. Go to your notification center. I know. Turn off all your notifications. Your, Caroline. Your brain is desperate for these dopamine hits. Don't give in. Don't give in. Turn off notifications. Leave this outside of your bedroom. Make no mistake. If this is in your bedroom, that energy is transmitting into you. So all the stuff going on in the world is going into you while you're sleeping. Okay. Before we jump off, here's what I want to say. We just gave you 10 years worth of stuff that we've learned in a 30 minute call. (laughs) If it feels overwhelming, just just take a deep breath. All we want is to, is to take one or two things that we suggested and start with that. In fact, if you're willing, I would suggest coming back to this call, rewatching it and make some notes of some of the practices that you eventually want to take on, but just do one or two at a time. Once you've built a habit with that in two to three weeks, then stack another one on top. So we just want to give you all of this because we know that not everything we said is going to resonate with everyone, but everyone is going to be able to resonate with at least one or two things. And if you're a skeptic and you think this is just weirdo stuff, fine. I'll challenge you to pick one thing. Just pick one thing and do it for 30 days and see how you feel. Just pick one thing and do it for 30 days and see how you feel. And one last thing. Oh, just one more. Just one last thing. Just one more. This type of work, what we're talking about here is so important to us. It has literally, it's changed everything for how we experience ourselves in our lives and each other. So as you start to implement one or two or three of these things, Would you please just keep a journal, pay attention to what kind of shifts for you and let us know, give us your feedback because it's, it's wonderful to share this with you today, but what's going to be most important for us is when we hear from you in one month, two months, three months, a year down the road and hear how these strategies are actually impacting your life. Lots of love. We'll see you next Sunday for our big announcement. And yes, of course, Iris, the trainings are always posted to the YouTube channel and they're posted to the team pages tomorrow. Lots of love. Have a good night. Thank you. So good to see you all.